Hey, welcome back. Um, this is the second part of the video series that we're doing on integrating React Fire with React. Um, React Fire, as it says, are hooks, context providers, and components to make it easy to react with Firebase. For those who use Angular, it's kind of like uh, Angular Fire, but for React. Um, so the first time we handled uh, login and log out, and now we're going to um, show you how to use collections, and we're going to show you how to add items, remove items, and list items. Uh, please make sure you like and subscribe. Also, please check out my other content I have on Udemy and I have on Gumroad. And let's get to the code. And so last time we showed kind of the login and logout functionality. Um, now we're going to actually start to use some of the collection um, data. So we are going to start by um, uh, adding the ability to add items to just a rough collection. So, uh, sorry. So we're logged in, no thanks. And so we'll just put a list of items on the bottom here and uh, show you how to add stuff to collection. So first let's go to our home screen and um, let's just add another button next to this. And we're gonna call it add items. Do add items, All right? And let's add a function on the top here. And we are going to then, um, let's put all, let's put this add item stuff into a div because we want to have a separate collection with that stuff in it. I'm not focusing too much on styling here, if you haven't noticed. Um, and then in here, we're going to render a list of items, okay? Um, and we're going to hopefully, if everything works right, we'll add them to a collection here. Um, so first, let's uh, yeah, let, first let's focus on the adding the item. So if we go back to React Fire and their um, use cases, let's see. Um, okay. So here is how you create a collection. So what we're going to do is up here at the top, we're going to, so we're going to have a collection of items. And so this is our items ref. So we're going to get a ref to our items from Cloud Firestore, right? And then there's different ways that you can query to get the data. So you can let's go back, let's go back to the React Fire. Yeah. You can get a collection, and then from a collection, you can get a specific document, or there's a way to just get the whole collection. We're going to get the whole. So, what we're going to do is we're going to get the whole collection of items off of this ref. So, the way you do that is there's a another hook. We say const, and then we say data, which is the results, and then we say status, and then we can say use. Fire store, fire store collection. And then we pass it in the collection that we want, which is this items ref. And let's import use fire store collection because I don't think it's imported. Oh, sorry, you might equal sign first. And then what's going to happen is that I use fire store, use fire, use fire store. So the status will let us know if it's loading and the data will be the results. So what we can do is down here, we can say data.docs, data.docs. Then if we have some docs, then we can map that, the D, and then we can kind of render whatever we get back. So we don't know what we're gonna have back yet. So for now, we're just gonna say, div and then we'll say key because we know we need a key because we're going to get a document back and the document that we get back we will use the id as the key and then and then what we'll do is in here until we know exactly what we're getting back until we define what we're getting back what we will do is we will just display id in here also so if we go back what this will do is it'll loop through any documents that it gets from this collection and it will just loop through and render them. 
what we will do also is we'll add a little um, loading indicator. So we can also do this. And we can set the is loading if we have status of loading. Status loading is true, then render that, otherwise render null. So that will give us our is loading. Not reprops docs of undefined. So data is undefined, so let's put that on there. Okay. So well first let's let's go into here and let's start a collection and we'll call our collection items. Next, and then we're gonna add a document and let's just call it um, name first item. So let's go back and you see we have our first item. So it, it rendered it. And now we know what else is on there. So let's go this. Oh, because D is the document. We need to get the data. So it's D, my bad, D dot data dot name. And so that's how you get it. So now you can see we're able to loop through the items. Uh, but what we want to, the last thing that we really want to be able to do is to be able to add items. And so you can, we're going to add items using the same ref. And so what we're going to do inside of this function is we are going to say items ref doc, generate your own ID set. And then the, right now the fields, only fields that we have are the name. And so for the name, we will just um, new date plus name. And that's the name, and then the ID will get set for us. And let's just put a wait on here to make sure that everything's cool. Let's be nice and catch errors. Okay, let's uh, see if we can get this right the first time. Let's try and add an item. And so it's adding our item. Let's. These are kind of on top of each other, so let's change this to a P. Let's change this to a P. So it's a little bit um, straighter, and so we can add another item. You see our items are getting added to our collection. See they're showing up here. Uh, actually, I find it pretty awesome that we're able to use a simulator and not have to go back and forth to the database, but we have our items here. What's the last thing that we want to do here? So we're able to add the items. Let's um, let's just quickly throw a delete in here since we're here. And we'll take an ID. And then I think it is the way you do it, like as you get the item ref doc. And let's just add it on the end. Place else to put it. It's not the prettiest looking example. Let's put it in the front. So at least there's some uh, consistency here. So just put a little padding in there to separate it. Oh, I didn't put the action on there. So let's do it on click. We're able to delete our items. You can see they're really, really gone. Why is my question is why is my login? I think I'm not doing something right because why is my login screen showing for a, a quick second? Like, I don't know why that's happening because I thought the suspense fallback would handle that. I'll, I'll have to dig a little bit more to see why that's happening like that. But that's not the behavior that I expected to see. If someone knows, let me let me go back and look at this uh, common use cases and see how they're doing it. Um, combine auth, so let's go down to their auth. They don't have this auth thing in here. Do I need this? Let me see what happens when I take this out. 
it doesn't really seem to be making much of a difference at all. Interesting. Well, like I said, I'll have to do a little bit of uh, a little bit of digging to see why it's showing my login page even for a split second. I would think that this suspense would handle that for me, unless I have this backwards. But I'm following the documentation, and I have my suspense on the outside, my auth check on the inside. Yeah. So I don't know. Like I said, I'll I'll have to dig a little bit deeper to see why I'm seeing this behavior. But um, we covered the things that we wanted to cover. Let's do one more thing. Let's actually allow you to, so let's log out and then let's on our, um, um, we can, I, I don't want to get too crazy and create a whole bunch of other stuff here. So we're just gonna use the same screen for login and for create account. The difference is we'll just change this to an on click and we'll call a function um, do create account. Let's actually take this outside the form so we don't have to worry about any issues with that. And let's um, let's copy this. I sure think I need to put this button back inside because I need all right so what we can do is we can on this handle submit we can dig down inside of the event and get the actual name of the button and we have put the name of our button and we've called it create account. So what we can do is if the name of the button is create account, then um, actually let's move this up top so we can get this because we want this information. Then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna call our function. So we're gonna now call do create account. We're gonna pass in the email and password we're going to await and then um, if everything's fine we're going to return uh, but we'll say alert otherwise let's move our try up so we can get it all inside the try catch block so let's get our try up here so if the submitter name is create account so we might not have a name. Actually, let's put a name on both of them. Let's create account. And we let's put a name on this one. Log in. So um, what we have now is you'll get handle submit will get called. If the submitter name is create account, then we're gonna we want to call the create account. Let's we don't need that anymore. What we're gonna get here is email password and then what we will do is we will leverage the um, actually we don't even need to try catch anymore because the caller is going to handle this so all we need now is to use the this auth that we have access to already so actually it's getting so simple now that I don't even think we need an extra function you know, let's just remove that function and let's just come right here and just call it. We'll just say auth sign up. Oh, sorry, it's create with user with email and password. And just create the user right here. Remove this. You have the email and password. If everything's fine, we just say it was created and we return. Otherwise, if there's a problem, it's going to throw an error. The error will get caught here, and everything should be straight. So let's try it, because if I run it right now, and I click Create Account, it should throw an exception because this user already exists. Hmm. Oh, I made the same mistake before. The um, These are values. So I need the value. So this should be email dot 
value and password dot value. So email address is already used by another account because that account already exists. Um, let's say Aaron K okay, Saunders. And let's create this password as password one account created and then logged in. Since I don't have any security rules or anything on there, it's still showing me all the data, even though you can see I'm logged in as a different user and I can log out again. So we're going to stop there because that's kind of just the basics that I wanted to cover. Um, if there's interest and people find this benefit, please give me the thumbs up and maybe we'll add some more functionality. But this is just a basic, you know, create account, log in, render data, but also wanted to show you how to use the uh, Firebase emulator and the, um, the emulator for database and emulator for um, Firestore. Uh, I hope you found this uh, beneficial. Uh, please make sure you like and subscribe and I will talk to you later. Thanks. Bye.